Hey, this is Will from Wet Willy Viz. Uh, I've been asked by several people on YouTube to give a tour of my 2013 Boston Whaler 170 Montauk. I've made a lot of custom features that um, I think they're exciting. They certainly help us stay organized while we're fishing here in San Diego, California. And I hope that they will provide you with some ideas of your own to help you create a more organized platform for your fishing expeditions. We bought the 170 Montauk. Um, it was a very efficient package for us. It still had a lot of capability. We do go about 35 miles offshore in it in San Diego. We're catching everything from rockfish in the wintertime to yellowtail and tuna in the summertime. Uh, we also trailer the boat down to Baja, Mexico and make quite a few trips down there every summer. So. With that said, I'll get into the nitty gritty and all the details of what makes our Montauk special. I hope you'll enjoy the video. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to ask me in the notes below. Thanks. So let me start the video on the most frequently asked question about our Montauk, which is the trolling motor, how that's mounted. Um, here up front, you can see that we do have two spares. Uh, which come in super handy when we're traveling down to Baja, but the uh, trolling motor is uh, just attached to the boat with this custom three-quarter inch marine board mounting system. And there's actually two pieces that are identical in shape, as you can see, and then uh, simply attaches with seven of these stainless steel fasteners. They're a pretty big bolt, hex head, large fender washer on top and a locking washer after that. And then they just simply get screwed in to the bottom piece with this hex driver. Um, I'm gonna back this out and show you underneath you'll see how this system goes together. It's not ingenious, but it works real well. It's very robust. Um, it bounces around in the waves and never seems to falter. And we do run a 55 pound 12 volt system Minn Kota iPilot. Uh, it's been more than adequate for the boat for us, but we're not out in super serious weather anyway. So just sliding this over, you can see that the bottom plate is bolted to the hull with nine large lag screws with 5200 um, screwing them into the wood underneath the fiberglass and then inside of these additional holes where the machine screws fit in are these uh, nice little well nuts from below and then similarly we use well nuts to mount the motor to the bottom of the this plate so it's a very strong system it works real well be sure to use 316 stainless steel that's the best stuff don't buy anything less than 316 or you'll be uh, replacing it in probably a year or two this is so uh, I was just saying this is a 2013 boat um, it's in real good condition for its age and the use that we get out of it um, and we do trailer it down to Baja, Mexico, so it does see a lot of use. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you on the outside are these bunks that I put on. They were only available in a four foot, I believe, or two foot section, but it's pretty easy to make your own and just make them a little bit longer, which provides a lot more utility when it is truly windy and you need some extra help getting onto the trailer. Um, we found this, these uh, guidons have been just essential in some of the ramps that we're frequenting. Um, one of the things that I'd like to point out too are a couple of items right here. So first you've got the location of the transducer for the fish finder. And a lot of people are always asking us, where do we place ours? So here you go. Um, you can see the strake right there, uh, right there. This is a transom light. We've got two of those that we can flash white and blue and keep either blue or white on. It's great for helping to make a bait in the morning. Um, but if you looked at this from that 
uh, fold in the hull, it's approximately three and a half inches in to center. Um, so right from this little fold here, from flat to an angle, um, on the dead rise, uh, you've got the 5200 transducer, and we are running a Lowrance HDS9. Um, we found that that unit seems to be more than adequate for our needs. Other thing is we went through many, many sets of tie-down straps. Tie-down straps are essential. You guys have all seen the funny videos of what happens when you're not using them. But these buckles, these boat buckles that West Marine puts out are absolutely better than anything I've used so far. And I would highly recommend them. Um, it's a very simple uh, solution that just kind of interference fits and folds over and then uses the tension of the, the buckle to hold itself in place. Um, they seem to work a lot better than any of the ratchet systems and never really failed us so far. So moving on to the boat, um, one of the best things that I've invested in this boat was a $20 item from Costco and there it is. Um, you guys that are putting sea deck on your boats, fantastic. You guys have the money to do that. I don't. I spend about 20 bucks every two years for one of these pads. It's the greatest anti-fatigue mat going and when you're done with it you just toss it out and put a new one on in two years. So for 10 bucks a year I'm getting all the benefit of that sea deck and um, you know nice strong legs at the end of the day. Um, so moving up to the front of the boat um, there's a few things to point out here. This boat did come with the trolling motor package so there's your 12 volt um, uh, plug for the trolling motor to plug in or outlet for the trolling motor to plug into. One thing that we do on our boat is we've got this piece of black foam rubber in the bottom to just keep it nice and clean and um, helps prevent all the dinging from the anchor. We run this little Danforth anchor and uh, honestly we don't deploy it unless we absolutely need to. Um, just take note that that is coiled up just to store in the garage right now. We would never launch the boat with it in that condition. The, the road uh, should be just, you know, tossed into the anchor locker loosely, um, not coiled in any way so that you don't get any knots. But we really just carry the anchor for just a safety device more than anything else. Very rarely are we using it. Um, turning around on the Montauk, we've got one of our customizations here which has really been a great thing for us uh, we've got a Yeti 75 quart cooler with a custom cushion on top and then custom rod holders on the side so if you look at the way this works we have fashioned these out of aluminum let's see if I can do this there's an aluminum bracket right there that we've then just screwed two pieces of one and a half inch PVC to um, with some machine screws. Uh, this gives us four extra rod capacity for a total of uh, 18 rod holders on the boat and we use just about every one of them when we're out there. Um, we load the Yeti up with frozen half gallon bottles or milk bottles um, and then we usually take approximately two gallon frozen milk milk containers and maybe about five or six of the half gallons for a you know offshore adventure for tuna and then we'll just top the cooler off with cube ice and that saves us a lot on cost. One of the other things about our 75 quart Yeti on the front of the boat is that we have this uh, custom cushion on top and it's not just a cushion for people to sit on but it's actually a very important safety device for us. Um, if you are running a boat bigger than 14 feet I think you're required at least in California to carry a throwable PFD and we actually carry two. Uh, the first one comes out and deploys ready to just throw it and then the second one we added a little tether to so that you can just uh, clip that onto the boat and pull somebody back in. We also keep some uh, charts underneath some info on the trolling motor how-to's and some charts for some of our favorite places that we like to go. Um, one of the things that was required for this larger cooler, the 75 quart Yeti, is this uh, custom marine board cleat or um, 
capturing device and we have also upgraded the uh, uh, retaining system from just a simple um, light duty bungee cord uh, or a small, you know, I think it's a quarter inch rubber cord that comes with the boat for holding on the Coleman to uh, a much more robust system that holds with two um, ends of a bungee to the cooler um, and that can be seen underneath here um, and that proves to be invaluable for uh, when you're bouncing through some chop uh, for the cooler to not move forward. Um, we have a bunch of ice in there, you know, it gets to be a couple hundred pounds, plus you've got rods bouncing around in there too. So it's a lot of stuff for that to hold. But this seems to work real well, and that's contoured uh, exactly to fit the Yeti. So coming around from the front of the boat, um, let's see. There are a couple of items on the door here. One is our um, plug for plugging in to 120 volt power from the house to charge our gel cells. We do have three gel cells on board, um, and I'll show you those in a bit when we get inside of the console. We've also upgraded the latches here for a, a little bit of security with the locking mechanism, and we've done that here and also on the bait tank back here so that we have a, a way to you know, keep somebody out for a little bit longer. Um, I'll just show you the console. Well, first of all, there's a couple of ratchets that you probably don't recognize. Of course, there's two on this side. One is for the VHF antenna that goes up fiberglass part here. Um, this one. And then this ratchet goes up and just bends all the way this tube bends all the way around over and down to the other side. That allows us to ratchet this down and still put the mills cover on the boat, keeping it clean. Uh, we have four floodlights, two to the front, two aft. Um, they're the uh, floodlights that will blink or uh, go white. You can dim them, they turn blue, they do all sorts of stuff. We really just use them white and um, they were super helpful when we were looking for lobster pots that we can't find in the middle of the night in the winter. <clears throat> um, this is one of the big features of customization of this boat. Um, we've got a secondary panel here. Um, the switches and breakers are identical to the stock ones used by Whaler, but you know, sized accordingly to the electrical um, devices that they're powering. But we've got the raw H2O, the four floodlight, the aft floodlight, and then the transom floodlights that are transom lights that I had uh, showed you at the beginning of your video or earlier on. A um, couple other things, we have a VHF which is synced to the plotter and that is really a nice feature to have when you have this distress panel button that you can push and you know let your guests on the boat know too. <clears throat> just push and hold that distress button for four seconds, three or four seconds, and uh, it'll dispatch a message to all surrounding boats with DSC as well as the Coast Guard. Um, one of the other things that we have is just a RAM device holding the iPhone. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things that we run on this little iPhone as another redundant system is the um, Navionics software for iPhone. $10 uh, app for I think a year and it's absolutely invaluable. We uh, log our miles, we log out you know, our average speed, we log uh, where we went and it gives us redundancy for the plotter so just in case something were to happen with this system we're not relying on any of the boat's electrical system to get us back in. Um, one other thing that we did was added this um, stereo system. Really happy with it. It's been very robust and terrific system for us. Puts out pretty good sound. Um, added the uh, Edson knob on. That was a quite a spendy item but it's really been great. It's uh, maintenance free. It's made out of great material and it works real well when you're trying to park the boat at the dock and get around stuff. Um, we carry the kill bag. This usually gets filled up pretty pretty much to the top um, with yellowtail and tuna. Um, when we're down in Baja we'll fill that easily in a day with a couple hundred pounds of 
yellowtail. Um, over here, we have two AFCO gaffs, a six foot and a four foot. Those are the bird's all uh, gaff holders. I highly recommend them. They've been great, great gaff holders for us. Uh, they hold the gaffs real securely, safely, and deploy in just a matter of seconds to get to the fish when needed. Um, the other thing is uh, the ditch bag. I'll go over in just a second. Um, I wanted to show guys that I get a lot of questions about why I run flat clips or flat lines on the back of the boat. Um, this is pretty much my setup here. So it's just a piece of um, aircraft cable that's been crimped or you know heavy uh, plastic coated leader material. And I just put a snap swivel on it. Pretty ghetto, but works just the same. And I just wrap that right around the bow rail or the, the side rails in here and run the, the line through the snap. And then that snap just deploys like that and it gives you a better hook set when uh, the fish do bite on the troll. And we run the rods in this holder, so it's about, oh, I'd say maybe five feet up from the back of the boat. Uh, it just gives us perfect geometry for what we're doing here in Southern California. Um, one of the things that we did, which was a pretty big project on this boat, is put the speakers in the back of the boat. A lot of the boats house the speaker right in the console. We wanted to try and keep as much space for storage in the console. So we chose to route the wires for the speakers, for the stereo, into the back of the boat. We used the existing port um, that was in the starboard location uh, for um, this speaker and just enlarged it and then created a, another marine board custom fit trim piece that you can see right back here. So that's the half inch marine board and then the speaker is just seated onto that with just simple clear bathroom caulk from Home Depot. Um, that allows us to get in there pretty easily if we need to access any of that compartment as well as um, you know replace the speakers on an as needed basis. This is our second pair of speakers in a couple of years. Um, they do get pretty grimy uh, with a lot of blood and just general use. Uh, we like to crank the stereo pretty hard. Um, the pole holders, um, I've been asked about that. These are the West Marine stainless steel pole holders. They're fitting onto uh, 7 8 inch tubing, which is the standard 7 8 tubing that Whaler uses to build these rails. Um, coming back here, I wanted to show you we carry a supplementary tank, 6.5 gallons, and then we have the 22 gallon molar underneath the seat uh, gives us a total of about 28 and a half gallons and we usually generally use the rule of one-third out one-third in and one-third in reserve but a lot of times we do push it um, but we'll we'll go a hundred miles and feel pretty comfortable doing that on a flat day um, back here in the splash well we have the fuel filter for the gas that's been great for just getting all the bugs out of the juice that we run and um, we do occasionally put in a, a little shot of the ethanol um, chemical to get rid of the ethanol and the gasoline um, but we generally don't do that unless we're not running the boat pretty often. Um, one of the things that drove me crazy was the fact that this molar fit under the seat and it um, took up all that space but um, really didn't allow you to use any of the space above it or around it. If you can see the way that that fiberglass shell around it fits there's a good two three inches four inches above and maybe four inches on the sides. So what I did was we just move the reversible pilot seat forward and then lift up these panels. You can see I've got this hatch here um, so I've created a tray that I keep all my lures in and this has um, been a great great feature it's given us a lot more storage space and a lot more utility for some of the bigger lures and some of the weights that we aren't using every single moment um, it also allows us as you saw that in the original condition we store a hand bilge pump here I've never needed it but it doesn't hurt to have it um, some extra rope in case we ever were to need to tow somebody or tow ourselves, get ourselves towed in, and an additional hand gaff. Um, 
that's about it for there. Um, one of the things I get asked about a lot also is, uh, well, here, let me take a second to show you this. This is our Wet Willy Biz bucket holder. This thing is great. Um, this is our floor bucket, and we drilled that so the fresh water will flow out at the end of the day. We just keep all of our trolling lures in that, as well as our little micro bait uh, chum pot for catching mackerel in the morning. We just throw a can of cat food in that, drop it over the side and sabiki them up, get a bunch of mackerel in the bait tank, and we're ready to go tuna fishing. Um, one of the things that's great about this holder, though, is we'll use this as our bleed bucket and just throw the raw water wash down hose into this and let the fish bleed out head first, head down in this. Um, and this, this bucket holder will just keep this bucket so secure on the boat when it's rolling around in the waves. Um, that's been a, a really great product for us. So if you need one of those, contact me because that's something that we make. Um, and then in here, this is what I get asked about a lot. How did you fit a raw water wash down on that little 17 Montauk? Well, here's the answer. So if you look in here, um, there's a piece of three quarter inch marine board and then a secondary piece of three quarter inch underneath. And what that does is gives us a platform to mount the raw water wash down hose on top. Um, it was a bit of a tricky and a uh, bit of a squeeze, but we managed to get it in there, and it's been obviously invaluable when you're tuna fishing. There's just blood everywhere. Um, this goes through a, a shutoff valve and a proper seacock, so to make sure you guys do that right, uh, you don't want to have that thing break off and not be able to shut it off, so that whole system is easily um, just bypassed by you know, turning this valve down. Just push that down. And now you're closed, um, and then here's your, there's your drain plug. Um, so pulling that up again, put it in an up position. Um, anyway, that's the raw water wash down. Hope that that's useful. Moving right on uh, inside of the console here. This is where we keep our Wet Willy Biz um, wallet. It's a waterproof system of just a series of Ziploc bags. It's something we sell quite a bit of, and it keeps people organized. We uh, get stopped pretty often here. We keep our uh, fishing licenses, Mexican fishing licenses, años, FMMs, tips, you name it. We've got all of our paperwork in here, along with insurance, um, registration, etc. But it keeps you real organized, ma makes it real easy to deal with any sort of law enforcement. Uh, we do deal with a lot of them here in San Diego, as I said. Um, so it makes the process super fast, super efficient. The guys really appreciate it, and we're on our way in a few minutes. So moving inside of the console, um, one of the things I'd love to point out to you guys is if you don't have a can of this on board, it wouldn't hurt to get it. Uh, stay afloat could save somebody really from having a super bad day. But it's essentially just a wax. You could use a wax ring from a toilet seal too. Uh, that would work. But uh, it's pretty cramped in here as I'm sure everybody's 170 is, uh, but we do carry quite a few tools right there. Um, our GoPro little attachments are in this little case. Um, and then we did rewire the entire boat when we bought it. Um, I didn't like the way that the whaler people had put the uh, main plugs and breakers or, or um, connections down on the floor of the console. I thought that was pretty silly, especially if a big wave splashed in. So I relocated all of the um, main or electronics to this panel. It's a half inch piece of uh, marine board that fits inside kind of behind the, where the rod holders are on the front of the console. We've got the A, you know, one, both, and two switch. Uh, two of the batteries are uh, put in parallel to one another. The third one is just simply for the restart of the engine. Um, what else? I've got breakers in there and everything's been relocated up and out of the way. Um, and just, you know, pretty much a clean installation. Tried to do it as best I could. Uh, if you guys see anything that looks glaringly out of line, let me know. I'm always open for some consult or uh, any kind of input that might be helpful to our safety. Um, we do keep some of the um, 
Pelican cases on board. We've got a first aid kit that's just got a host of uh, little remedies as well as a, a box full of bandages in there. And we find that we use those a little more often than we'd like to admit. Got uh, one more little clip just showing you the boat ready to get the cover put on. Everything ratcheted down. You can see that spreader bar ratchets down. That's in its lower position along with the VHF marine antenna. And the seat's in the back position, ready to get its cover put on it and put away. Plugged in, batteries getting charged. And you can see that just by the little blinking green lights to make sure that we're getting those charged up. Um, and last but not least, the folded trailer. So it keeps it off the sidewalk. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed watching my video. And um, if you do have any comments or uh, things to tell me, please don't hesitate. I always love learning. Thanks, bye. Other items. Um, we do run radial tires on both tires for the trailer, as well as the two spares. Um, it just uh, gives us a lot better performance on the roads, especially down in Baja. Um, and last but not least, um, if you guys aren't fans, uh, this is where we get a lot of our fishing information and we're always posting. Uh, I'm Will Doggy at uh, bloodydex.com, so if you decide you want to add yourself to the forum, uh, please do. And uh, please say hi and let me know that you saw the video. I appreciate any feedback, guys. Take care and happy, happy fishing tight lines. Bye.